your source for everything paranormal, Para-X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome to The Calling. This is Jerry of Sim, along with Kimberly Juarez with Cat Paranormal. <laughs> that was pretty good, Jerry. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> you were going to follow up with it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Watch everybody go, what kind of drugs is he on? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Uh, uh, how about you? I, you know, I've I've been after the um, well maintenance and the main office and everything because I'm having an ant, spider, and mouse problem, a trifecta, right? So the guy comes out today and he's hilarious. He's a smart aleck just like me, and it was like. He's my lost brother. I knew he was. But anyway, um, so he's, he's a native guy, and uh, he's looking around and everything, and he said, you think that's mouse poo? And I said, yeah. No, it's not. I go, really? And he goes, yeah. I said, what is it? And he looked around a little bit more, and he said, okay, you're not going to like this. I go, why is that? He said, the walls. The walls are loaded with spiders. And these holes you see right here, or these things that look like mouse poo, is actually the bodies of the drained of their fluid ants. Because you can see these um, oh uh, webs. Uh-huh. Um, the ants come on out, or the the uh, spiders come out. They put their webs, and the mice or the mice, <laughs> the uh, ants come trudging on out. Mm-hmm. They get stuck inside there, and the spiders come out really bad. There's holes all over That's in crazy. your place. Yeah, and I, he said, are you having any problems with over here? I said, no. And he said, well, you got one of those electronic things put in there. That's good. That should keep it there. But this is a problem that's just going to be never-ending. Um, and I'm going to put in my report and give it to them that uh, they need to put in new windows because this is this is really gross. I've never That's seen bad. so much. And then he looked up by my va- my vacuum cleaner, no air conditioner, uh-huh. and he says, "You know, you can see right outside here." I said, "I know." He said, "That's where they're coming in too." So he took his sprayer thing and sprayed a whole bunch, and it just started dripping down the side of my wall. Oh my god! He said. You can either wipe it up or tell maintenance to come on over here and clean that right. up. He said, because you yep. shouldn't have to, and there's nothing I can do. And then he went in the kitchen, and he's like, oh, this is disgusting. Who put these baseboards in? Because they're not even flush. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they're not oh, even around it. by the, the, by the um, refrigerator or nothing. So he loaded up, and in the bathroom, there's a hole in the wall in the bathroom where the uh, – uh, you know, the the sewer is and stuff, you know, if they yeah. ever had to. Um, he said, look, there's they don't have nothing on there. So all these spiders are coming through there, too. As a matter of fact, he said, look at this. And there was this huge web. I didn't even notice because it was down on, by the bottom of the turlet. And it just had tons of ant bodies in it. That's crazy. Yeah, that is it, so crazy. So gross. So tonight, I don't even really want to sleep here. But- <laughs> I don't have a choice. Right, right. Well, I did call the the main office, and they said, well, 
we have a new manager starting on Friday, you know. I'll talk to her about it. I said, nah, I think I'll come down on Friday and introduce myself. Yeah, definitely. You know, because this is gross. You know, I mean, the buildings that are next door, they're different apartment buildings, mm-hmm. and they're getting all new windows and everything else. It's wow. like this place has been around. This place is packed, and they charge more money for their their places and it's completely filled i mean there's no apartments that i know of that need to be rented and stuff and right why they just can't you know just maybe just do one window you know especially when it's this bad i know well the to me like that's a horror story like that's bad like i wouldn't sleep in there either especially the way he described it oh yeah especially you you know i have arachnophobia really bad yeah i don't like spiders. Of course. I hate them. Mufi, don't even think about putting them in the chat room. If you <laughs> haven't already, I haven't even looked. But please, save me on that tonight. Ugh. Anyway, it's just gross. So. Well, that's not cool. That's for sure. Yeah. I hope that gets solved. That's ridiculous. I hope so, too. This is totally ridiculous. Yes. So, what we're going to talk about tonight are black-eyed children and the hat man. So, I mean, there's... Okay, so I got more stories on the black-eyed children than I did on the hat man. And they're both like these urban legends. And, of course, Jerry even said he thinks they're even... It's even... The hat man is even like um, the top gun of shadow people. <laughs> you know? Um Let's let's go with uh, the black eyed children because we got. I feel like there's something very interesting about some of these stories that we've that we've read, and that, like I said, there's so many stories. So apparently, these black eyed children are something that's like some type of legend. Uh, I think Jerry, you said what that they're from. That well, the the first um, really time that, that people were talking about it was in 1950 Mm -hmm. and they claim the this uh, everything i've read about it always said that and that they claimed they came from in england came over here how i'm I'm not for sure but you know i know that i've had three um well two personal with black-eyed children and one story from up in hackensack Mm -hmm. um that happened up actually was yeah, it was hack and sack. So it was rather interesting. But I'll let you go ahead first. Well, I think, okay, so I'm going to just describe them. So apparently people think, you know, are they real? Are they urban legend? They also call them B-E-K. Um, what else? Um, apparently they are, like, what are they? Are they, like, they even come talk about, I mean, they're, they're enti- entities from beyond the graves. These are, like, aliens, demons, Demon, demonic entities, even vampires, they describe them. They're ages from 6 to 16. That's what I got. Um, uh, they're malatone. They talk m- monotone. And they're, um, they, they, they've even described them as, like, they're not very fast, but all of a sudden they can disappear and be somewhere else. You know, they're not very uh, fast moving or anything like that. Um Let's see. What else did I learn about them a little bit? Um, I I don't know. Like, dude, but like I said, there's so many stories. I don't know where they would come from. The where I got my information is apparently they, this was like in the earliest story that I know of, and it's a popular story. Would be in 1983, and it's from a man. His name is um, Brian Beth Bethan. Bethel, I think that's his last name, and it's Abilene, Texas. And apparently he was, uh, he describes that this happened in August, and it was late at night, around 9 o'clock, and he went to go um, pay his uh, internet bill, and he was going into one of those drop boxes, and he says that there's a theater next, across the street, actually, from that little area there, and he says he was, you know, just got in the car, was getting ready to start the car, and all of a sudden he he heard a knock on his doorway. And there's two little boys 
you know, standing there. And he said that he looked at both of them and he said they, they, they kind of look like one of them looked kind of like he, if it was scared or something. And the other one looked like he was more confident, you know, the older one, I'm assuming. Um, so then he says that he asked, you know, he rolled the window down just a little and he said, he asked, um, yeah, what did you guys need? And he, they said, well, do you think you can take us over to our house? You know, but he, like I said, he was their monotone. They're not very um, expressive. They just stand there and talk. And he says, one of the boys says, can you please take us to our house? Or not even please, could, could you take us to your house? And he says, um, could you give us a ride? And so we can get money for the theater. And he goes, well, what movie are you going to see? This, you know, And he knows it's late already. It's after 9.30. And he said, they say, oh, we're going to watch whatever movie was playing. I think it was like a Star Wars movie or something like that. And he goes, well, that just started like 45 minutes ago. You guys are late. And he goes, one of the boys got real mad and says, just give us a ride so we can go. And, you know, he got really upset and angry. And he goes, just give us a ride. He goes, but you have to invite us in. So that's the other thing. You know, you have to be invited. Sort of like a vampire. Cut, yeah, and that's why they, they think they're even vampires, in a sense. You know, I don't know if anybody's ever described, like, getting hurt by one of these things. I mean, to me, I think that's creepy as it is, <laughs> you know, trying to, I mean, I would have left. He said that he did. He he got freaked out, and he, he took off. And when as he took off, he had to turn back around into the parking lot to go outside towards the theater. He says that the kids um, just disappeared and they were angry at him. They were super angry at him because he told them no, that he wasn't just going to give them a ride, you know, when he knew that the movie had already started. But I mean, I think to me that is pretty creepy. And I mean, that's just, and apparently that's a popular story and that's in Albaline, Texas. I don't know. I just think, you know, and like some people describe them, okay, pale skin, um, certain ages. Um, some people even say that they don't even see eyes. They see sockets, you know? I mean, some people see say, you know, there's nothing to them. They're pale. Um, but I mean, what, what do they do? What, why are they so creepy? You know, why are they so... What are they, are they spirits? Are they some type of, like they said, alien type of thing? I don't know. So you go ahead and tell your story, Jerry. I thought that was okay. interesting too. Yeah, this was in Hackensack and it was, it had to have been right around 2011. My father lived up in Hackensack at that time. And the story goes is that there was a, um, oh, a deputy sheriff and there was a missing girl up there at that time. And um, she, it was just like she, um, you know, was just missing. And so anyway, so this deputy sheriff, um, he wasn't too far away from the theater that's up there. And um, he uh, was driving. It was at nighttime. And he seen this girl walking. And this is the winter time, and it was kind of mm -hmm. cold. So he pulled over to the side, um, and, well, she he kind of pulled over. He kind of pulled up to her and then opened up the window a little bit and said, where are you going to so late? Mm -hmm. And she says, can you give me a ride? And he says, what's your name? She said, are you going to let me in and give me a ride? And he said, hold on. So then he pulled in front of her, got out of the car and took a look and she was gone. And wow. he was like, what the heck? You know, he knows that there was a girl there. Mm -hmm. So he gets back in the car. He turns on the lights and everything. He's looking around. He starts to drive forward. He was going to turn up, go up a little ways and then come back around. And uh, all of a sudden there she was again. And this time he pulled in front of her mm -hmm. and then stopped, got out of the car rather quickly. She was nowhere. 
he looked in the um, – it was over by the theater. He uh, looked um, and took his flashlight, looked at for the um, in the ditches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Nothing. There was nobody around. Uh, he even called someone else to um, um, come and take a look too, and there's just nothing. They, they just couldn't find her. But he said that the thing that he remembers the most – is that her eyes were just black uh, mm-hmm. because when he, um, you know, put the flashlight on her and stuff mm-hmm. that he, at first he thought she was on something, you know, because right. a person's eyes can change a lot. But mm-hmm. he said it was just black and it was so odd that she wouldn't get in the car or she wouldn't stop and talk. And um, but he claims that it possibly was that girl. Now, that girl. Um, that was missing up there has still not been found. Really? Yeah, nobody's found her yet. I wonder but if I wonder if others reported her. I there has been that's there has been others over the years okay. um, of people that uh, have claimed. This is what I heard. I mean, I didn't. Uh, we haven't actively gone and done an investigation right. or anything like that. But from what I've heard, that. Um, you know, from just from people around that they heard about it, but mm-hmm. they don't know what to believe in it. Right, right. So, which is strange. But the other one um, that we came in contact with was the Hopkins House. That's mm-hmm. what we call it. We're not going to say exactly where it was or anything. Right. But we had a friend of ours said she's got some friends that um, – needed an investigation in their home. Uh-huh. Um, they've got a lot of stuff going on and everything. So um, here we, we get there and the parent and her mother claimed themselves as pot smoking, beer drinking witches. Mm-hmm. Weird. And just strange. But their daughter, when we first got there, their daughter was sitting on the ground and she was doing something. I don't remember what it was, putting something together. And I said, hi. And she looked at me, eyes black, completely black. And she was like, hi. I said, so you guys having problems here? I didn't know what to say. You know, I was totally dumbfounded. I don't know where Steph, Katie, and and, um, Casey was at that time. I don't remember. They might have gone inside. Um, And a friend of ours was with um, Michelle. Michelle was the one who got us the investigation. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, she started telling me right away. The first thing she said was talking about what her grandmother did, took away her Ouija board and broke it and burned it. And its screams were coming out of it and flames shot out like fingers. And I mean, she was really freaky and she was just a kid. She was maybe 16, 17 years old. Uh And then her sister came out, who was about 18. And I said, do you believe that? She said that grandma doesn't let us do anything and neither does my mom. She said, I'm not allowed to go to school dances proms anything like that and she was like i've never even kissed a boy that was one of the things that she said and i mean right. <laughs> she was stone serious so this house when we did the investigation we, we spent almost like over an hour and a half upstairs itself because mm-hmm. they said that that's where a lot of the the shadows are and stuff in this girl's room so it was um George, I, and Katie, I do believe. And uh, I had a um, voice recorder going. And again, it was hot up there. Man, it was about like 100 degrees. It was horrible. We were wringing wet with sweat. And uh, just as we decided to call it a night, I said, very smart assly, no, not Jerry. But I said, <laughs> well, I think we're done. And thank you very much for not talking to us. Okay, so remember that part. Just remember uh-huh. that part. Uh-huh. So um, we went downstairs. And in this house, Katie was obsessed in looking in a mirror. 
and what was looking back at her. And I'm going to try to find that picture That's and so bizarre. put it up. Yeah, it is the most bizarre photo I have ever seen. Um, and, and she just couldn't stop staring at it. So mm-hmm. we had taken a photo of it, of the picture. And um, uh, when we blew it up, what you see looking back at you is the most bizarrest thing ever. So I'm going to look for that, and, and I'm going to wow. keep talking about what happened and stuff. So this young girl, we tried to tell her and her sister, mm-hmm. um, you know, what was going on and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that you know, just trying to comfort them and stuff, you know. Right. And um, so anyway, um so we, we got done with the investigation, mm-hmm. and we went to um, – where'd we go? Um, okay, we, we left and everything. Um, we went through all evidence and stuff like that. Oh, this stupid computer. Give me a break. Oh, no wonder. Sorry. <laughs> it was my own fault. Um, so this um, – uh, we did all the evidence and stuff like that. Now – when we did the evidence and I sat there through all this listening through stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. um, And the only thing we got being up in that room for all that time, that was so hot. I came to the end where I said, well, thank you very much. They, you know, and all that other stuff. Yeah. These two voices at the exact same time. And they were both women said, Leave us respect. Really? And it was like, oh, my God, you know. So we had all this evidence. We kept calling the people up and telling them, hey, you know, um, we'd like to do a on. reveal yeah. and stuff, yeah. you know. And you have something going on at your place and show them the picture and yeah. stuff like that. And um, they they wouldn't get back to us. Yeah, now, oh, months, I believe that. Yeah, months later – I'm working, I was working for T-Mobile at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, All of a sudden, um, I see that woman and the the girl, the little girl, Uh come on in and stuff. And they turned around and looked at me and I said, do you guys remember me? And the little girl's eyes are brown. She was fine. She goes, hey, look, mom, that's one of the ghost hunters that came to our house. And I just was like in shock. That she looked okay, you know, that there was nothing going on with her and stuff. And I said, well, we have the evidence if you guys would like us to, you know, bring it over and go over it. They said, no, we moved out of there. We want nothing more to do with that place. We're done with it. Wow. You know, and it's like, okay. (laughs) So then was she a black-eyed child or was she possessed? Well, I don't know. You know, who's to say that, you know, so like in the, the thing of the officer seeing mm-hmm. this girl that um, he feels is the girl that's been missing. And then all of a sudden he sees her and she's got black eyes. Right. So who's to say that they are not made? You know what I mean? Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That they're somehow you know, um, made, I guess that's the only word I can possibly say. I I just think that's bizarre. It's totally bizarre, man. It's just freaky weird. Freaky weird. Yeah. Well, one story too was up in Texas, another Texas story, but they lived in out in the country and the mother, um, told the teenage girl, you know, she's, I think 13, 14, you know, I'll be back. I'm going to go grab something to make to finish dinner. And I'm just going to run up to the store. So don't answer the door. She tells the daughter and the little boy. And the little boy is probably about eight. She's like 13 or 14. And so they're in the house and he's playing with his stuff and everything. I think he sees two children coming up the road. But he says when he sees them, they float, Right. And not walking, they were floating. And then he'd he'd stop to look at them, and they'd stop, 
because they knew he was watching them, right? Which to me right there is, I would have been freaking out. And he's trying to tell the the teenage girl, and, you know, of course she's just like, oh, stop it. You know, there's nobody out there. You know, we're out in the country. There shouldn't be no kids right now. And, you know, she's trying to make it logical for him. And so he goes again, he looks out again, and he says that they get closer and closer. To me, it's like one of those creepy stories, you know, that you you want to tell your kids at a campfire or something, you know? Right. He, he says that all of a sudden, um, they said that in the story, um, the, you know, she's telling him to calm down, you know, to stop, and there's nothing out there. And he's like, really, I think there is. And so he's looking out, and they get closer and closer. Finally, they get up to the house. But they don't knock like a regular knock. They knock like a like right, a, like it takes a lot of energy. Them to knock. just for them to knock, right? Absolutely. And um, I think they even can you let me in? Let me in, you know. But like they have that voice where they're not like not any energy or anything. Just let us in. Let us in, you know. And. He, they described these children with black eyes and the girl's freaking out and she's like, oh my God, you're right. You know, there's somebody out there. And and then he, he tells her, she goes to open the door and he says, don't open the door. Remember what mom said, don't open the door. To me, I thought that was like, that's scary. Like how in the hell? And all of a sudden the mom starts pulling up and they, they're crying because they're they know something's going on. They get angrier because they won't let them in and they're pounding on the door harder. So they're getting scared. And all of a sudden the mom pulls up and they're crying like, you know, and she's like, what's going on? What's wrong with you guys? And they said, there's some children with black eyes. There's some children. And I mean, I think they even talked about how they've seen these children on that road before too. Like there's other stories connected to this. You know, and they called the police. They went to go look for the children and everything, and there was nothing, nothing at all. So to me, that's that's scary. Like, what do they want? What are they going to do? That's what I want to know. Well, maybe I don't right. want to know because there's even <laughs> there's even a, a part where I see this story. This guy's writing out about black eyed children, and he's writing a story, and that's what I was doing. And he says, well, as he's writing these different stories and 